We are a month away from Christmas today. I haven't even started my Christmas shopping. I know we've been talking about supply chains for ages and how you got to start your Christmas shopping early. I am the last person to take my own advice. Uh, interesting piece in the Los Angeles Times, though, about the privacy risks hiding in your holiday gifts. Smart products and services is what we're talking about. And your gift may actually pose a threat to a friend or loved one's privacy. Something to keep in mind while you shop. Andreas uh, Andreata is Director of Consumer Privacy and Engineering for the Electric Electronic Frontier Federation or Foundation, rather. And Andres, can you give us an idea of the range of gifts that may be putting our privacy at risk? What are we talking about here? Hi, thanks. Yeah, well, it's almost everything that connects to the internet, really. Uh, we have anything from baby monitors, from your TV, to your doorbell camera, uh, vacuum cleaners, your, your fridge now, like all of these things can be invading your privacy. And they some of these things have microphones and cameras, so they get to see into your life and into your private life in your home. And you know many of them have very bad security, if any, and others are actually selling the data or having partnerships with law enforcement uh, that are very concerning. Okay, so what kind of risks are we talking about then? So basically anything that happens in your house, uh, anything uh, that that device touches in terms of your uh, private information is exposed. Uh, again, either because they do not have proper security or because they're selling it to other actors um, for advertisement or who knows what. And I think one of the things that we have to keep in mind is um, you have really big brand names and you would assume they're good at security. But if you quickly search on the internet for uh, recent leaks of, of data, you will find very big names there. So if these big names are not actually that good at protecting your data, um, all of the other brands that sell all these new smart products that you've never heard of, uh, I would have serious doubts that they can match those companies. Why are they collecting our data? Are they, uh, can they make money off of it? What's, what's the, yeah. uh, okay. This, there's been like this a trend uh, of thinking that the more data you collect, the more valuable your organization is. Uh, your company and your product is to other uh, investors or maybe to selling it to other third parties. Regardless of whether that's true or not, uh, at the end of the day, there's been this frenzy of, of companies collecting as much data as they can uh, just in case they can use it. So there's that first part, which is very worrying because they don't even need it. And mm -hmm. many others actually do sell your data. Um, if you look at, uh, you go shopping for a new TV and all of them, they're say, they say now they're smart TVs. Uh, one of the biggest brands now is Vizio, but Vizio just announced that their profit on ads, subscriptions and data double the, are double the money that they make on selling TVs. And that should be very telling when TV companies make more money on selling ads and your data from actually selling the TVs. And they're not the only ones. LG, mm -hmm. Samsung, Sunny, they all do things similarly. They, On top of it, they show you ads. So they're triple dipping into your wallet, right? First, you had to give them money to purchase the TV. Then they are collecting as much data as they can from you to sell it to anyone that wants it. Uh, they don't really care who. And then on top of it, they show you ads. So there, it is just in an insane ecosystem of companies profiting and exploiting you without knowing. Is there any way to find out that they're, you know, to, to be aware of these, uh, the fact that they're collecting data on, on labels of, of, of anything that you buy that's, you know, Bluetooth enabled or Wi-Fi enabled or, um, you know, uh, smart tech? Is, do they have to have any warning label on that? It depends on the jurisdiction. And honestly, um, there is not like labeling they have to do. Mm. For example, under certain uh, jurisdictions, they have to uh, get clear informed consent. And I think that is the case in Canada with uh, PIPETA, I think it's pronounced, the Personal Information Protection and Electronic Document Act. Um, it's the same in Europe with GDPR. But the, what we see is that they, they there's flagrant um, um, violations of that consent, like they're actually not getting it, or they use what we call dark patterns. And they use these patterns in which like, you thought you opted out or you didn't opt in into the tracking and through your interaction in the settings and everything else, they opt you in again. Uh, Google was uh, um, uh, shown as one of the worst uh, at doing this by the Norwegian Consumer uh, Council and all these TV uh, companies do the same thing. It's really actually very hard to opt out 
which is really crazy. Uh, but my recommendation is, you know, just go search on the internet the name of what the brand or the TV you're looking for or any other device and add, uh, you know, security risk, privacy or something like that. And you will see articles. And if you see a lot of articles, mm. I would get concerned. And so we have to is, research before we shop. I would say so. Yes. Just because they have a view into your life, right? Like some of these are mm. cameras to monitor your baby. And as a parent myself, like I, I would not want to put a camera watching my baby that has really bad security um, practices and invites any stranger to connect to it. And then that they're selling data to yeah. who knows. We've heard about people hacking into uh, baby monitors and talking to people's kids in their room, which is terrifying. We've heard about doorbells, uh, people getting into a house saying, I just want to let you know, I just hacked into your your doorbell or your thermostat or whatever is enabled. And here I am. Uh, so you've got a, a bit of a problem there. I can hear everything you're saying, which is terrifying as well. But uh, we're talking about interactive toys. We're talking about fitness gear. We're talking, I mean, there's, it's ubiquitous, uh, the devices that are attached to the internet. What do you keep in mind when shopping this season? I mean, how do you mitigate, mitigate the risks out there? Uh, I look if it says that it's smart or connected. And I ask myself, do I really need it to be like a baby monitor? Like I don't need it. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. other people have different needs, but I don't. So I skip the ones that are connected or so-called smart. Um, the other thing is, even if you have to buy one of the devices, because sometimes it's it's, it's very privileged not having not being in a position of not having to buy some of these devices. Um, you do have recourses in depending on the jurisdiction you are. And I would put complaints to the um, consumer protection agency or to the data privacy protection agency. I would put a, a complaint because clearly they're not getting proper consent. If it wasn't mm -hmm. properly informed and clear, uh, I would be putting a complaint with them. And the more we do that, uh, the more it puts pressure on, on these agencies to actually act and on these companies to not do it because of fear of regulation or, or lawsuits. It's going to be an interesting shopping season, that's for sure, if yeah. people care about their privacy. Sadly, I think people are getting complacent. Do you? I'm not. I'm getting even more worried. I think what's happened is um, we hear a lot, they nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. And it's a very misleading line because it makes you feel like, well, you have to be a criminal to care about this. And it's not that you have a private life. Your walls are not made of crystal. You don't, you know, you still lock your house. Um, people don't have a camera 24 seven looking into your life. So there is an expectation of price. It's a human right. Uh, I think people actually are more conscious about it. There's a lot more people asking, like right now we're having this conversation, which didn't happen before. So I think actually people are more concerned about it. They're getting more informed and governments are listening and starting to take action. Andres, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much. I think it's an important topic that we continue to touch on our privacy and our devices. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.